Step 5. LAN, MAN and WAN. In this step we're going to talk about the various types of quantum networks, in particular how we categorize them in terms of their size. In the previous step we considered how do clients connect through the quantum internet to our quantum data center network. Over here we have a few quantum computational nodes or a sensor node, all connecting via the gateway uh, router to the front-end servers of the quantum data center network. In this step, we're going to take the quantum data center network away and really concentrate on this bit over here. So let's look at some definitions. First, we have the local area network or LAN. These are the smallest types of networks and usually they're used to connect computers or nodes in a business or in a school or a university campus or even in fact in your home. Then the next step up is the metropolitan area network. This is your network that covers the area of a city and it often connects multiple lands together. For example, it provides high-speed access for businesses or fiber network that connects cell phone towers to each other. If we go one step further, then we hit the wide area network. These reach out over hundreds or thousands of kilometers. And finally, we've got the next type called the backbone or the core network. And this covers both the metropolitan area networks and the wide area networks, but its purpose is very different. There's usually no direct connection to users or to endnotes and it's used to connect sites or networks together, sometimes called a backhaul network in the telecom industry. So this is a classification of classical networks, but it applies to quantum networks as well. So let's look at a particular example of a quantum local area network, a quantum LAN. Here you can see the structure. Over here we've got some data center that uh, the users might wish to connect to. The users are over here in terms of the clients, so a few of them are computational. We've got a sensor network here. And you can see that the structure of the network, the topology is that of a tree. So we have multiple switches and then over here we've got a quantum internet gateway. So the LAN is this entire thing, but if the users of the, of the end nodes want to communicate with some other network, they have to move via the quantum internet gateway, this quantum router over here. Here is a particular traffic pattern. This is what happens when this computational node wants to talk to the quantum data center. So it need to, needs to pass through this switch, this switch, and then finally the gateway uh, router connecting to the front end servers of the quantum data network, data center network. And if one of the nodes wants to talk to the quantum internet or some other network, then they have to go via the quantum internet gateway over here. Some specifics about local area networks. The distances covered by these networks are usually fairly small. The networks are typically less than one kilometer in diameter. And they include of the order of hundreds of nodes. The challenges when it comes to local area networks is that the end node environment might be office or a small lab. So these are um, environments which are not particularly suited for high-tech uh, equipment that's needed for quantum networking. And also the cost of the equipment needed to connect to the local area network. The topology, as we said, is usually that of a tree that connects either to data center or to external gateways. And the node types that are included in LAN Usually we have very few repeaters, as we saw in our example, but lots of end nodes and switches, but few routers. Now we jump to the next example, and that's the MAN, the Metropolitan Area Network. And typically these are in diameter of tens of kilometers spanning your metropolitan area. Over here we've got some uh, computational and sensor end nodes and they are trying to communicate either with each other or with the quantum data center. And here the typical topology is that of a ring, as we can see here. So if this end node is trying to communicate with a different one, it just sends connection request down the ring in one direction, and that's picked up by the appropriate switch along the path. For example, in this way. 
Here, these two nodes are engaging QKD, while the sensor network is connecting to the quantum data center network. Some characteristics of metropolitan area networks, as we said, the distances covered are much wider. They're typically of tens of kilometers in diameter, and they include hundreds of nodes. The challenges when building or, or managing metropolitan area networks are the node cabinets and the environment might be outdoors, not just inside small businesses or labs like we saw in the local area networks. And um, they will require a lot of space, a lot of power and a lot of cooling. If you try to do that outside, this uh, presents obvious technological technical challenges. And again, we have to think about the environment interference. And this time we also have to be mindful of sharing fibers. In local area networks, the fibers can be dedicated, while in metropolitan area networks, um, some of the fibers that will be used must be shared uh, between the various applications or various uh, connections. As we saw, the topology now is a ring or other redundant structures for connecting to data centers. And the node types, again, we've got very few repeaters, lots of end nodes and switches, and few routers. Now, finally, let's talk about the wide area networks. Now, these now span thousands of kilometers. And you see that the topology is very different. Here we've got a very long chain of quantum repeaters connecting from round one quantum router to another quantum router. And this is just uh, due to the sheer, sheer size of the distances that the WAN is covering. So some characteristics of wide area network, now the distances span hundreds of, or thousands of kilometers, and here we talk about tens of routers in terms of their size. And the challenges, of course, are long hauls require many, many, many repeaters. This comes with a lot of challenges and a lot of difficulties. The cabinets and the deployment environments must be likely ragged. And high performance is desired for backbone uh, legs of the wide area network. But this is extremely uh, difficult to achieve with quantum repeaters, as we saw in some previous lessons. Now, the topology is quite different. It's not that of a tree or a ring. It's a very sparse uh, when repeaters are included. As we saw before, it was a very long snake-like topology. But it may require parallel paths in order to increase the amount of uh, quantum data that can be transferred or the amount of bell pairs that we can set up. Node types now are very different. We've got many repeaters, as we saw in our example also quite a few routers. But probably this time we don't have many switches and we've got very few end nodes. The last type of network we're going to mention are transoceanic networks. This is another type of wide area network. And here, if you imagine, you've got one continent over here and another continent over here. And you can use, for example, satellite connection that distributes uh, entangled pairs to ground stations located um, at, um, uh, on the continents, or as we saw in previous uh, lessons, you can employ freighters transporting uh, expensive quantum memories to implement a sneaker net. In this case, we've got quantum memories on one continent, another bunch of quantum memories at the other continent, and a freighter that moves uh, one and a half of bell pairs between them, establishing entangled connections. Now, again, for transoceanic networks, we're talking about thousands of kilometers in diameter for the distance, but this time we only have a handful of nodes. Because we're using satellites or freighters, there is no need for repeaters. Still, there are many challenges associated with type, these types of networks. Undersea deployment is very hard and expensive. Satellites are difficult to launch and they're expensive and their performance is incredibly low. Sneaker net, Performance might be a little bit better, but the cost is uh, very high. High performance is desired for transoceanic networks, but hard to achieve with repeaters. And the topology, again, is very sparse when repeaters are included. Of course, serves as backbone for connecting other networks or many uh, underwater hardened repeaters. So here, the node types are quite different. We saw we've got 
satellite that generates our entangled photon pairs. And we've got a bunch of memories for SneakerNet. Um, if you want to, if you want to uh, implement transoceanic networks using repeaters, you have to lie a cable of repeaters um, uh, at the bottom of the ocean. This concludes our discussion of uh, the types of quantum networks that we might encounter in the future.